Hi and welcome. Uh, today we're going to have a look at a topic called order of operations. Uh, sounds like a strange topic but what it really means by operations are just things like adding and multiplying. Now when we have a sum which has maybe more than one operation, so maybe an add, a subtract, a divide, what's really important is that we make sure we carry out those operations in the right order. It might sound a little bit complicated, but thankfully we have a, a really nice little tool to help us to do that, and that is bid mass. Uh, so let's have a look and see how it works. <laughs> I'm going to start with a simple sum. Let's have 3 plus 4 times 5. Now, I used the phrase operations a moment ago, and by operations, we simply mean the plus and the multiplication. Now, I guess because we read from left to right, that the natural assumption is that we would perform a sum like this, from left to right. So the first thing we might do is 3 plus 4, which is 7, and then take that and multiply that by 5. Answer there, 35. And unfortunately, we you to do that, you get it wrong. Because the order of operations is something that tells us what order we have to perform a particular sum in. So, what's going on? Well, I mentioned at the beginning that we have a tool to help us sort this out. And that tool is called BIDMAS. B-I-D-M-A-S. Each letter standing for something different. So the B stands for brackets. I'm going to come back to that a little bit later on. And the same for the second one, which is indices. The next set are a little bit more familiar. The D is division. The M is multi, whoops, multiplication. Then we've got addition and finally subtraction. Now, what bid mass is telling us is that when we look at any given sum, we have to work out the operations in this order. Let's try and put that in practice. I'll go back to the sum that we started with. So let's just rewrite it again. It was 3 plus 4 times 5. Now, let's check out bid mass. The first letter we had was B, brackets. In this case, there are no brackets. Then we had an I for indices. Well, indices are the little numbers that you sometimes see at the top of each number. Nothing here. We'll come back to that later. D, division. Is there any division in there? No. M for multiplication. Now we have our first instruction because in the sum here, we do indeed have a multiplication. So that is what we have to do first. So we do 4 times 5. That is your 20. So we now have 3 plus 20. As it happens, addition comes next. So we are allowed to do 3 plus 20 is 23. And that is the correct answer for this sum. Let's try another example. Let's say we look at 6 divided by 2 plus 4 times 5. OK, let's go again. We started with a B. Brackets, no. Indices, no. Division, yes, we've got a division in this one. So we're going to do that first. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So we now have 3 plus 4 times 5. The next letter we come across is M for multiplication. Yes, there is a multiplication here. 4 times 5. So 4 times 5 is 20. 
3 plus 20, 23. And that is the basis of how we work out what order to do a sum. Now, at this point, if you are studying functional skills or you're just trying to improve your general maths, that is as far as you need to go with big mass. But I know some of you will have inquiring minds and want to know how the rest of it works. So let's have a look at it. I'm going to start again with the same sum that we used on the first page, which is 3 plus 4 times 5. Now we've already agreed that we do this by multiplying 4 times 5 first and then adding the 3. So 4 times 5 was 20 plus 3. We came up with the answer 23. Now, let me write this sum again, but I'm going to do something slightly different to it. In that I'm going to add a set of brackets. Now, let's perform this sum using bid mass again. And of course, we're starting with the B, which is brackets. That simply means that we look for a set of brackets. Here they are. And the first thing we have to do is work out the sum inside the brackets. So this time we are doing 3 plus 4, which is 7. We are then left with just a simple 7 times 5, which is 35. So you can see there that use of brackets completely changes the order in which we did the sum and therefore changes the answer. And the same is true for indices as well. Let's use the example 5 times 4 squared. Now there is your indices. If you are not sure how these work, please have a look at my video entitled Square Numbers, where we cover the basis of indices in there. In this case, we're using big mass again. B brackets, no. I indices. Yes, there's one. So follow the rules. Four squared means four times four. We have to do that part first. So four times four is 16. And then we multiply it by the five to get our answer. And that's how bid mass works. I hope you found that useful today. There is just one thing more I want to add about bid mass. And that is to talk about calculators. If you are using a basic, fairly cheap calculator, just try putting one of the sums that we've talked about today into it and see what answer you get. Because the surprising thing is not every basic calculator follows bid mass and sometimes they get it wrong. Anyway, I hope you found that useful. If you have, please hit the subscribe button. Uh, I did mention that I also had a video out about indices and that's the one on the left hand side of the screen now entitled uh, Square Numbers. So have a look at that if you think you'll find it useful. Thank you.